Okay, so in this video I'm going to be talking a bit about nuclear fusion and there are a few key things to know about nuclear fusion. First things first, your fusion materials need to have a nuclear number of less than the 56 number and obviously that's the nuclear number of iron, which means they're on the left hand side of the maximum on, on your binding energy per nucleon curve. So they're on the first slope, not the, the sloping down section. Second thing, for fusion to occur, you need need the the fusion, well, sorry, the material is being fused to have high kinetic energy, and I'll explain why in a second. And you need to know that there are two key forces that you need to talk about in play: the electromagnetic force that occurs between charged particles, and the strong nuclear force which acts between nucleons. Okay, so let's have a look at some couple of examples to explain what I was talking about. Okay, so we're going to look at a first of all a low energy, um, a low energy attempt at fusion. Obviously, if their low energy fusion doesn't occur, but this is the attempt. Okay, so you've got your two uh, products that you are trying to fuse here. They're both charged particles, which means they have these fields around them, which are illustrated by these red lines, which means there's a force acting on them. Now if these are both nuclei you know that they're both going to be positively charged. So you know that they're going to be the electromagnetic force between them is going to be repelling trying to push them each other away. Now if it has low kinetic energy this means that the the two particles don't get that close together so they don't get into the range of the strong force so although you could argue there's the gravitational force acting on them the electromagnetic is much much stronger so the two uh, the two fusion particles will push away from each other and they won't end up being fused so you won't get any energy which is obviously not what you're after so we've got no low kinetic energy no fusion because your resultant force is the electromagnetic. <clears throat> so the second example we're going to look at has high kinetic energy. So I'm just going to draw in the field again for these two particles. Now, once again, they are both nuclei, so they're both positively charged. So the electromagnetic force is attempting to push them away from each other. However, the, as you can see, if you, they're at high kinetic energy, they can get much closer together because they can transfer much more of that kinetic energy into electric potential energy. So they get much closer together. And when they get this close together, they get into the range of the strong nuclear force. And the strong nuclear force is much much stronger than your electromagnetic force, so your resultant force is going to be the strong force, which will be end up in this range being attractive, pulling the two of them together, which is what allows fusion to occur, because you've got this strong force, which is going to be an attractive force, pulling them together. And it's going to be require about one mega electron volt of energy in your fusion products to allow this to occur which is a colossal amount and which is why this process occurs in the stars and that sort of thing because they're so incredibly hot and high pressure that that's a region where the particles have this and sufficient energy to allow the strong force to overcome the electromagnetic force We've had, there's quite a few attempts going on by different researchers to recreate this on Earth, and some of them have successfully created fusion. However, currently we haven't found a way to do it that we actually get energy out of, because we find at the moment we have to put more energy in than it takes, than we actually get out of the reaction. But that's sort of the current state of play, and obviously they're looking to develop it so you actually get energy out, but we're not at that stage yet. 